Welcome, test dummies, to the Cardboard Crash Course. I'm your safety instructor, Ethan, and today we're going to be taking a test drive through the Winu, a faction present in the Twilight Imperium 4th Edition base game and extended upon by the Prophecy of Kings expansion. This will be both a component overview as well as a more in-depth guide later in the video. So if you're just interested in that, you can go ahead and skip there from the link in the description. Without further ado, let's head on out and get these guys checked out. Here we take a look at the Winu's faction sheet. This race is very proud, but physically weak. Long ago, part of their race left to become custodians for the Lazax Empire on Mechatol Rex, keeping it safe and politically guarded. Now that the Empire has fallen, and the great races of the galaxy rush to the throne, the Winu leave their home planet to retake Mechatol Rex, believing it is their blood right to do so. So, when you choose the Winu, you do start on the planet of the same name. This is a 3 resource and 4 influence home system of only one planet, which makes it pretty easy to take and a decent resource and influence sink overall. I like it. Also, when you start, you're going to be receiving one carrier, one cruiser, two fighters, two infantry, one space dock, and one PDS. Overall, I do unfortunately think this start is a bit weak. The single carrier is kind of disappointing, especially when you only have two infantry to take along. But as we'll see, they do have ways of fixing this up later, even in the early game. They do, however, have a very interesting starting technology, as they don't actually get one assigned to them. Instead, they can choose from any one technology that does not have any prerequisites. So, in the base game, these were Plasma Scoring, which is a red technology that states when one or more of your units use Bombardment or Space Cannon, one of those units may roll one additional die. We also had Anti-Mass Deflectors, the blue technology that allowed your ships moving into asteroid fields, so moving into and through them. When other players' units use Space Cannon against your units, apply minus one to the result of each die roll. We had a green technology that states, during the status phase, draw two action cards instead of one. This was Neural Motivator. And then we had the yellow technology, called Sarween Tools, that states, when one or more of your units use production, reduce the combined cost of the produced units by one. So, an overall good collection, a little bit limited uh, with the four in the base game, but the Sarween tools or the Animas deflectors, really depending on whatever you started with, uh, is a really interesting choice. This does get even more interesting with the Prophecy of Kings expansion, however, because it allows for four new technologies to be chosen from. Starting, we have AI development algorithm, the red technology that states, when you research a unit upgrade technology, you may exhaust this card to ignore any one prerequisite. When one or more of your units use production, you may exhaust this card to reduce the combined cost of the produced units by the number of up unit upgrade technologies that you own. So a very overall good ramp to your tech. We had Dark Energy Tap, a blue technology that says after you perform a tactical action in a system that contains a frontier token, if you have one or more ships in that system, explore that token. So the frontier tokens do not normally start able to be explored, but with this technology you can do that. It also says your ships can retreat into adjacent systems that do not contain other players' units, even if you do not have units or control planets in that system. So when you run out of frontier tokens, it's not completely useless. Also, we have the green technology called Psychoarchaeology. It has a couple different paragraphs that read, You can use technology specialties on planets you control without exhausting them, even if those planets are exhausted. It also says during the action phase, you can exhaust planets you control that have tech specialties to gain a trade good. Always letting those tech specialties be of use throughout the game. And then finally, we have the last yellow tech, called ScanLink Drone Network. When you activate a system, you may explore one planet in a system that contains one or more of your units. 
So normally in Proph Prophecy of Kings, you're not allowed to re-explore a system after you've first captured it, but this allows you to do it multiple times. So this is a really interesting choice and a lot of early game decisions going on. We'll talk a little bit about how each one of these can affect the Winu later on, and maybe a couple of them that are more likely to be picked than others later in the video. The real bread and butter of the Winu, however, come with their focus on Mechatol Rex itself. These abilities on their faction sheet perfectly explain that. So first we have Blood Ties. It says, you do not have to spend influence to remove the Custodian's token from Mechatol Rex. So, the Winaran custodians that have been on Mechatol Rex this entire time allow their brothers to enter the city without having to prove themselves. We also have a very powerful ability called Reclamation. It says after you resolve a tactical action during which you gain control of Mechatol Rex, you can place one PDS or one space dock from your reinforcements on Mechatol Rex. So, no matter when you take it, whether or not you use Blood Ties, you can drop a PDS to start producing, and a Space Dock to start protecting yourself once you gain control of that system. This perfectly combines with their new mech unit that they have from the expansion, called the Reclaimer. So, just like Reclamation, very similar name, it says after you resolve a tactical action during which you gain control of this planet, you may place either one PDS or one space dock from your reinforcements on this planet. This unit also has the normal 2 cost, 6 combat, and sustained damage abilities of most mechs in the game. This is an incredibly powerful addition to the Winu. Not only does this allow you to drop an extra PDS or space dock on Mechatol Rex when you take it, but as long as you have the reinforcements for it, you can grab any planet as you go along, really fortifying where you're going and doing that construction ability out of turn. I like this a lot and it perfectly pairs with them. Their other faction-specific unit is of course the flagship, named Salai Sikorian. It has 8 cost, 7 combat value, 1 movement, and 3 capacity, along with sustained damage. A fairly decent flagship, maybe on the lower end of pure power. It also has the powerful ability though, when this unit makes a combat roll, it rolls a number of dice equal to the number of opponents' non-fighter ships in the system. So just like a destroyer with anti-fighter barrage, this flagship, as long as it's in combat with the rest of your units, possibly sitting over Mechatol Rex, is going to really help mow down the fighter squadrons that your enemies have come to attack you with, allowing you to get those hits directly into the larger ships. I like it a lot, especially with the new abilities that we're going to be coming up to with the leaders. They do have two faction technologies, just like every other faction. The first one is Lazax Gatefolding. This is a two blue prerequisite technology with a couple different abilities. First, it says, during your tactical actions, if you do not control Mechatol Rex, treat its system as if it contains both an Alpha and a Beta Wormhole. And then it also says, as an action, if you control Mechatol Rex, exhaust this card to place one infantry from your reinforcements on Mechatol Rex. So this allows you pretty much to attack and take Mechatol Rex from anywhere across the board as long as you have a wormhole near you, or with the wormhole nexus. And after you've done it, it still is of use, being able to ODST infantry onto it to help keep it. The other technology is a two yellow prerequisite technology that is hegemonic trade policy. It states, you can exhaust this card when one or more of your units use production. Swap the resource and influence values of one planet you control until the end of turn. So, right away, this strikes me as a quick way to get six resources once you've grabbed Rex. If you take Diplomacy, you can use this right away to unexhaust that uh, Mechatol Rex that you've just taken and reuse its influence as resources somewhere else. 
but this of course is useful all throughout the game, even if you haven't taken it, allowing you to grab extra votes or resources when needed. The leaders introduced in this Prophecy of Kings expansion are very interesting for the faction and really add a necessary boost that they were lacking before. First of all, we have the agent, Barakar Barakan. It is an exhaustible ability that says, when one or more of a player's units use production, you may exhaust this card to reduce the combined cost of the produced units by two. So like I was saying, this leader really helps take advantage of that early game and boost up their kind of lackluster starting fleet. I see this most of the time being used on yourself, although you could sell it to somebody else if you don't have any more command tokens to use on production during the rest of your rounds, but it's a little bit difficult to sell because they'd have to pay you something and it is the resources that you're decreasing. We also have the commander, Rikar Rikani. It is an unlockable leader that unlocks when you control Mechatol Rex or enter into a combat in the Mechatol Rex system. So throughout the game, you're going to be wanting to take Mechatol Rex at any point you can. And although it is much more beneficial to take it right away by using that Blood Ties abilities and saving yourself some influence, you can always go ahead and swoop in with that Lazax gate folding and uh, unlock Rakar Rakani all the same. And then one he, once he unlocks, you can immediately use the ability. During combat, apply plus two to the result of each of your unit's combat rolls in the Mechatol Rex system, in your home system, and each system that contains a legendary planet. The two that really strike out to me are the Rex and home system. They had a weakness before this commander, where leaving to go grab Rex was really a downfall because you'd still have to control the planets in your home system to score objectives. But now, this ability really allows you to more effectively control your home system while you're gone. The Legendary Planet one is interesting and allows for some fun plays that I'll talk about later. Finally, we have Mathis Mathinus, the hero. He is an unlockable. He is unlockable in the same way that every other hero in the game is, that is having three scored objectives. And as soon as you do, you get the ability Imperial Seal, Sins of the Father. It is an action that purges this card and says, perform the primary ability of any strategy card then choose any number of other players, those players may perform the secondary ability of that strategy card. So this is a much, much needed improvement to the Winu. Before, all a person had to do to counter them was, would be to not take, not let them take Mechatol Rex, not let them take Imperial, the strategy, not let them take the Imperial strategy card. Now, even if they've been locked out of it, they can still use its abilities. I like this a lot, even if it is just a once a, g a game ability. Finally, we have the promissory note. They did get a little bit of an update in the first Twilight Imperium Codex on the Fantasy Flight website. That will be linked in the description below, and it is a print-and-play document that really helps a lot of factions improve. Originally, it was Acquiescence, an ability that you gave out to another player that says, at the end of the strategy phase, exchange one of your strategy cards with a strategy card that was chosen by the Winu player, then return this card to the Winu player. Unfortunately, this is terrible. The only reason anyone would ever want to use this would, to be, would be to make you lose. Rip Imperial away from you, rip any strategy card away from you that you needed to win, and completely cancel that and Kingslay you. I suggest getting rid of that as soon as it's possible and grabbing the Codex one, which is 
Acquiescence Omega. An improved promissory note that you give out to another player that says, when the Winu player resolves a strategic action, you do not have to spend or place a command token to resolve the secondary ability of that strategy card, then return this card to the Winu player. So, fortunately for them, their promissory note went from being one of the worst in the game, aside from the Nalus, to really one of the most sellable in the game, besides the Nazrakaz. This is so easy to get out, and as long as you're selling it for a couple trade goods, maybe a few trade goods, or a promise of protection from somebody, or possibly somebody else's promissory note, Every single person on the game board will be happy to get this. Each faction uses secondaries of other cards, and nobody could go without this. So, there's the Winu. I think that their overall power has really been increased by these new cards, and I'm really liking the way that they've turned in recent times. So, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about some strategy cards that they like and combos that aren't immediately apparent when first looking over their sheets. Oh boy, the winning. What a conundrum. Yes, they were the worst. I'm not even going to beat around the bush. They were the worst in the base game. Some people like to say Arborek or Muat or a couple of others, but no, let's be real. If somebody can either take Imperial from you, or gut you from behind at your home system, you're just playing a vanilla faction. And at that point, I hadn't really seen them do much of anything. So, did the Prophecy of Kings expansion help them out? Absolutely. I think that they really took a look at those two weaknesses, and thought to themselves, how can we fix these? We don't need to make the Winu a more gimmicky faction, because they were never gimmicky to begin with. They're all about the objectives and the points, and they just needed something to let them get there, because it's a fine line. If you make them too able to grab too many points at once, they become overpowered. If you don't let them grab any, because they're going to be destroyed, then nobody wants to play them. And I really think that this expansion helps them out with that. So first, I do want to say, play with the pink pieces, please. You only have Titans and these guys, and I don't know, maybe one other, um, that actually want the pink pieces, and I think they look great. Otherwise, purple or black do work, because the ships are supposed to look like the Lazax Dark Space Navigators. So, those are a couple options for you. The home system, has always been pretty decent. I like the one planet home systems because just losing one planet in a two or three planet home system is a lot easier. You can really hunker down on this one and only have to protect one. Their technologies have always been great. The Lazax gate folding, allowing you to always teleport there, has only gotten better with the Gamma Wormhole Nexus. Um, and then the hegemonic trade policy is always great. As soon as you take it, you get those six resources, get to drop uh, stuff right where your space dock is, and have a good time with that. The main, main addition that you're going to be playing with throughout the entire game, though, is this new Reclaimer mech. This thing is insane. You never have to take construction again. I mean, unless you really, really are pushed into a corner. But you know, you have five PDS and three space docks. So every planet you're going to be taking, at least in a six, seven, or eight player game, you are going to be able to be dropping one of these with your reinforcements. And the fact that this combines with your reclamation ability to be able to drop two PDS and a space dock onto Mechatolrex when you grab it, it just boosts the power. And I like that they really are good at hunkering down now. Their agent is perfectly fixing another weakness that they had, which was their starting fleet. Everybody talks about how the Winu are supposed to have this huge, massive fleet given to them by the Lazax, but they don't really actually have that in-game, and I think this could give it to you. Maybe over a couple of rounds, 
But eventually, especially because you're going to be having way more space dots than everybody else, it's going to help you a lot. So always be using that on yourself. The Winu need as much self power as possible. You don't really want to be selling that agent. They need to be selfish because really the main strategy of them in the base game was just how do I look so pathetically weak to everybody at the table that they feel bad for me and leave me alone so that I can go get Megatol Rex. And that sounds like a horrible faction to play. <laughs> so now that they have some of these abilities, it really makes them a lot more enjoyable. With Rikar Rakani, the commander, I like how it also says that you get to take legendary planets and hold them down with a plus two to all of your dice rolls. Really, if you're building a map, really hope that you get that in your starting hand or barter for it to be able to get it near your home system. Hope's End and Primor are great for them because out of turn, you're gonna be able to be dropping more infantry, more fighters, more maps with these legendary planets. Or if you're playing in a draft, really pick the place that's the closest to the legendary planets. They love them. Being able to grab them and then spawn things on Mechatol Rex or on your home system to protect it while being able to keep those legendary planets almost makes it so they're not entirely a Mechatol Rex faction anymore, but a pretty much Mechatol Rex, or I could do a legendary planet or my home system now. So I like that a lot. Their hero, Mathis Mathinus. Uh, first of all, can we just appreciate Sins of the Father being an incredible name? So a stall tactic with them, this action, um, you being able to use any strategy card, this really, really hits where the Winu are trying to go. They're not, like I said, a gimmicky faction. They're all about objectives. They're all about doing things to get the most amount of points as possible. So just choosing a strategy card, whether you've already picked Imperial and are picking it again, or have been completely locked out of Imperial, locked out of Mechantel Rex, and are just choosing one that you need, it's great. Even if it's just a once around, I mean, there should only be relatively five to seven rounds in a game. So that is a huge swing to your advantage. And if you can take Mechantel Rex, hold it down, swoop in there with that Lazax gate folding from the Wormhole Nexus or whatever, and then lock it down, pop Imperial, grab that point, pop another Imperial, grab that point and another secret objectives or public objective, you blow past everybody else in that round. So I think you need to be friendly with people, not attack them out of the gate, and let them think that you're slightly weak or more friendly than you will be later. And then as soon as you get the chance, boost your army with that plus two, grab it, hold it, and use this hero even when it's taken away from you and get as many points as possible. I think they actually have ways of doing that now. Another thing is this Acquiescence Omega card. Like I said, the original Acquiescence card was really terrible. I don't really know how it made it past R&D. The ability to take away one of their strategy cards, especially when they're literally the Imperial strategy card faction, was really, really feel bad for them. Ripping that away only meant they lose or are really left behind on one of the rounds. And I don't see how somebody would be willing to pay for it if it didn't make you lose because they don't benefit at all from them. I think now with the new Acquiescence card, giving a uh, secondary to anybody else is really nice. It's pretty much that relic that allows you to spend a strategy token without actually spending it. And, but you can just do this every turn. And this really lets you be that friendly player at the beginning of the game that you need to be in order to give yourself those opportunities to get where you need to go. Um, so use that as much as possible. Sell it. Sell it for a trade good, two trade goods, an alliance promissory note, whatever you need, just to make friends. And as soon as you do, you can hunker down away from those friends and keep everything to yourself. One thing that I would like to talk about as well are the strategy cards that they like. 
I think that at the beginning of the game, you're going to be growing warfare, especially now when you're going to be able to get the AI development algorithm and grab those cruisers and PDS that I think you should get and just move to Mechatol Rex as fast as possible. Warfare can be really powerful, being able to move twice in a turn, or if you can't get Warfare and there's Mahakt at the table, ask them to Warfare you. Getting to where you need to go as fast as possible and grabbing those legendary planets and using the abilities as much as you possibly can throughout the game is essential to them. Another one that I think is really nice is Diplomacy. They don't like being messed with once they actually grab what they need to grab. And Diplomacy will let you completely cut everybody else out of the equation. Do I even need to say anything? Imperial. Grab Imperial as much as you can once you get what you need to get. Makatol Rex, Imperial. The Imperial Seal. Use it as many times as possible. I mean, this is your point maker. If you can't get it, then of course the secret objectives are really nice. But that getting a public objective and the Rakatol Rex point is exactly what they need to do. And I know that everybody can do this around the table, but if you get that action card that lets you take somebody else's strategy or bartering with people to get this card, you need it. And if people are willing to give it to you, I think they're probably beginner players, but hey, take advantage of it. Show them what you can do as the winner now. If you can't get it, grab politics. One more to say. Oh, you need Imperial? Next round, take Imperial. The last one I think they're really going to like mid-game is technology. Uh, like I said, cruisers and PDS are what they're going to want. Upgrading a cruiser to get there faster and upgrading the PDS to hunker faster is really important to them. And although they don't really need it at the very early, early game, or at the very late game, technology is a card that you're at least going to be wanting to grab the secondary of that you can pay for easier with hegemonic trade policy throughout the game. Leadership, trade, and construction, especially leadership and trade, are situational. You don't really need to be doing too many strategy uh, secondaries with them, and you don't really need to be activating too many systems if you have those cruisers. So leadership is okay. And trade is nice if you really need to make those friends early and need to prove pe to people that you're willing to be friendly with them and be a, an alliance with them. But um, it's not that necessary for them, especially when they can boost their resources once they grab Rex or any high influence planet. Uh, construction is completely made, well, not completely, but almost made worthless with their Reclaimer Max. Uh, you're going to be using this all the time, and if you're taking Warfare and reactivating or activating new systems with your Max, then that's better than construction could ever be to anybody. So if you're using the primary or secondary of construction, I think you've really been pushed into a corner and are unable to get out of it. So try to stay away from it as much as possible, but maybe you're going to need it for that second PDS or something like that. The main technology I think you should be getting at the beginning of the game is AI development algorithm. Their best technologies are the unit technologies that everybody gets. So either AI development algorithm or psychoarchaeology. Those two are really nice as their agent already is kind of a double Sarween tools. Tripling that is kind of obsessive but can help if you think that you've been isolated by the rest of the table while building the map or drafting. So it's really between AI development algorithm and psychoarchaeology. Uh, if you have, if somebody's really spited you for some reason, even though that like, you're the Winu and put an asteroid field in the front of your uh, home system, or put three or four blank spaces right by your home system, that's the only way that I suggest anti-mass deflectors or dark energy tap. But if you're pushed into the dark energy tap corner, it's not too bad because it's, those uh, frontier tokens are really nice. Getting that secret objective or action card ones and being able to stall people out in order to grab what you need to grab at the end of everybody's turns can be a lot more helpful than originally predicted. 
And it's also going to make you not have to grab Imperial until you really need it if you have secret objectives already. So overall, I think they've really improved and I really like the direction that they've gone in. They are no longer pushed into a corner and more just have strengths and are able to do other things outside of those strengths if they need to. They're overall pretty fun faction now, and I will be playing them again at my next game session. So as always, the faction overview guides are going to be right here on the playlist, and the top right-hand corner in that card, when it appears, is going to be the Twilight Imperium base game and Prophecy of Kings full beginner's guide that I'll be making with a couple of my friends. So I hope you really enjoyed this, and have a great day. Bye-bye.